In this video, we are going to talk about two other properties associated with logarithms. The first one we're going to tackle is the power property. The power property tells us that log base b of m raised to the n power is equal to or equivalent to n times log base b of m. And in, in my simple mind, essentially what we're doing here is I am going to take that exponent and the exponent sort of just jumps to the front of my logarithm statement. If I look at an example, an example might be log, oh, let's say eight of x. And this time we're going to square this. We're going to raise it to some power. So um, let's, I think I'm going to square it. I did say that. And this property says that I can rewrite this by taking this exponent and moving it to the front of my log statement. And all the rest of the parts of my, my base is the same, um, and my x remains in the same position. So here we're using the product property just to, to eliminate that um, exponent. Let's look at an example. Let's try example 12. If I rewrite this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my exponent to the front of my expression. And then I'm going to keep everything else exactly the same. So it becomes 6 log base 2 of 36. Sometimes that's as far as I'll be able to go. At other times, I can evaluate this and come up with the exponent that 2 can be raised to to equal 36. I'm going to do that now. I keep the 6 because it's being multiplied. So if I expand this, or if I evaluate, I say that this is equal to six times, and I ask myself what two to what power equals 36. So over here, I'm gonna say two to what power is equal to 36. And if we use a quick calculator, or if you use your fingers in this case, we learn that six is, or sorry, that X is equal to five. Two to the fifth power is equal to 36. So instead of writing all of this, I can just write a five because they are equivalent expressions. So I can continue to evaluate and say that log base two of 32 raised to the sixth power is really equal to 30. And that's definitely easier to digest than trying to manipulate that big fella. Finally, we're going to talk about the change of base property. The change of base property is helpful when you can't immediately see what a logarithm could evaluate to. What this property tells us is that I can take log base b of m and I can actually change the base and rewrite this as a division statement with any base in the entire world that I like. So I am going to put a note here and just tell you that this little c kid, he can be any base. And that's exciting. Any base in the entire world. And I put um, the base, I, my original base, falls into the denominator, and my m is going to jump into the numerator. So I can rewrite this as a division statement. Here's an example where I take log base 4 of 5, and that is equal to, in this case, I chose base 10. Base 10 is our common base, and a lot of times you'll see this written without the 10 here. But for formality purposes, I put it here. But I rewrote this as log base 5, 10 of 5 divided by log base 10 of 4. A handy thing about using base 10 is if we need to, we can pop this into a calculator because our calculators can easily convert um, the common logs into um, expressions or into numeric values. Um, and I have a blurb about that right here. Calculators evaluate common logs, or base 10, by default, and so they're handy to, to use. And I'll do an example of that in just a moment. Let's try evaluating one of these, um, one of these examples using a change of base. I'm going to start off with number 16. You notice I've skipped a few of these. I'm going to rewrite this using our change of base property. Um, and I, before I even do, I have to decide what base to choose. What I notice immediately is 32 and 8 
Both are powers of two. So I think in this case, using a base two would be pretty convenient. So I'm gonna choose base two. Choose base two, because they're both powers of two. All right, so I'm gonna write this as log. I'm gonna use my new base, base two, of my eight. And then in my denominator, I'm gonna put log my new base, base two. And here's where I put my original base, which was the 32. And so now I've rewritten it this way. I can evaluate each of these log statements independently. I ask myself two, to what power is eight? I'm gonna write that over here so you can see my methodology, my thought process. Two to some power is gonna be equal to eight. And I can do that pretty quick. I learned that X is equal to three. Two to the third power is eight. So I'm gonna rewrite log base two of eight as a three. And I can do the same thing for the denominator. I can ask myself two to what power is equal to 32. And in this case, I just keep two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is six. I can run up my chain and end up with two to the fifth power equals 32. So I can rewrite log base two of 32 as a five. And what I've done is I've figured out that 32 raised to the three fifths power is equal to eight. That's something I can't do in my head. I can't see it right away. And the change of base formula of property allows us to calculate that a little bit easier. What I'd like to do next is look at example 19. I'm gonna shimmy this up just a wee bit. I'm choosing to look at this one because I wanna write this one as a common log. Three and 20 are not, um, they are not powers of a, of a similar number. So I don't really immediately know how to write this as um, a division statement with a common log that's gonna help me a lot. So I'm gonna rewrite it using common log. I'm not gonna put the 10 here because you won't see that typically in literature, textbooks, places like that. Remember my big number is on top and my original base is in the denominator. Now you might be wondering, how in the world does this help me? It doesn't immediately, but I can use my calculator for that. And I actually brought my calculator with me, <laughs> handy dandy. And I am gonna type this in the calculator and let you see what that process would look like. The log button, let's see if I can move it up here just a wee bit. The log button is right next to your number seven. So I'm gonna click log, bounce it up here. I'm gonna zoom out just, a tad bit. I don't know if that makes it easier or harder. But here I'm going to do log of 20 and then I'm going to divide because we have a division sign by log of 3 and when I hit enter I have a nice decimal representation for what this logarithm logarithmic statement would be. 2.727 if you use good rounding, 2.727. And that is a decimal representation. It's an estimate. It's not an exact answer, but it does give us some indication of what we're talking about. And if I think about what does this actually mean, remember, I can rewrite this original log as an exponential statement. And I'm saying that three to about the 2.727 is going to be roughly about 20. And that's how using a common log can help us evaluate logarithmic functions. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next